All right, everybody, we are near the end of this review series. Man, this has been one crazy ride going through these movies. I'm so glad you guys have been here going through them with me. I love coming out to the Love Shack, talking some good-ass movies, and what better franchise to discuss out here than Friday the 13th. And now we are going to be talking about the remake. So I'm going to go ahead and start packing up all my shit, guys, because it's almost that time to head back home. Before I do that, though, I just got to say thank you for coming along on this ride with me. And no matter what movies I'm going to be talking about, I will see you guys next time. So we're going to go ahead and pack all this shit up and you guys can enjoy the review and... Oh, shit. <laughs> So Friday the 13th tells the story of a group of teenagers taking a weekend off at a lake house, one guy looking for his missing sister, and the new beginnings of Jason Voorhees. We made it everybody, we are at the remake, we are at the 2009 Friday the 13th movie, the culmination of this review series before Never Hike Alone. But I'm so glad that we're here. Not only because I'm glad to finally have all the hard work behind me, to finally have all these awesome videos out for you guys to enjoy and be wrapping up very soon, but because unapologetically, I will go ahead and get this out now, I fucking love this movie. Shoot me, I don't care. Friday the 13th the Remake is a badass Friday the 13th movie. I gotta be honest, I really rack my brain and I'm completely baffled with most people's grievances towards this movie. I can understand if you just like the classic appeal of the old Friday the 13th movies and having a new shine on this franchise that doesn't really work for you or whatever, that's fine I guess, although I still don't understand it, but a lot of the criticisms that I often hear with this movie really baffle me because they're criticisms that could easily be applied to every single movie in this franchise but those people that really harp on this remake oftentimes don't have those grievances with the older movies. So it's just, it always confuses me how much hate that this movie gets because I think this is one of the most underrated remakes and slasher movies that have ever been made. So let me start off with my few negatives of this movie because yes, it's not perfect. And as far as negatives go, I really only have three and they're very small negatives for me. The first one is that there are some characters in this movie, there's none that completely annoy me, but there's some that feel like they're written to be the overly comedic character and they don't quite land that way. Like there's a redneck character that kind of feels like a weird throwback to that character in A New Beginning, although not nearly as extreme or as you know flamboyant of a character, but he's on the screen just to be kind of a weaselly dirtbag and I don't feel like the movie really makes a place for him. It feels like he's a little bit unnecessary in the movie. And there's some other characters that kind of have those caricatures as well, where it just feels like they're thrown in for the cheap laugh and nobody's laughing. My second negative is that there's this opening sequence to this movie, which I'm gonna be talking about in my positives, that makes the movie really blow its load way too early. It feels like the movie never gets as badass, as intense, or as crazy as those first 15 minutes get. There's still great sequences, there's still tense scenes, there's still some awesome stuff throughout this runtime, but it doesn't feel nearly as awesome as that opening sequence, and you should have plenty in the back half of the movie to kind of counterbalance that. And my third negative and final negative, yes, final negative, it's all positive from here, I cannot stand the final scene in this movie. I think the last little jump scare, the final little, you know, He's back moment is so fucking lazy that it irritates the piss out of me every single time I watch this movie. One of my biggest pet peeves with horror movies and one of the worst horror movie tropes in my opinion is that type of ending. Like this whole, gotcha, he's still alive ending. And you know, they make fun of it in Scream. It's one of the reasons why I love the ending of the collection so much because it kind of flips it on its head. I hate those types of endings if they don't at least put some fucking effort into it and they put no effort into it. Not only does it not make any sense, not only is it completely unexplained being the fact that we have a human Jason in this movie, but it's just ineffective because you're expecting it. An uh, ending like that only has any kind of weight if you're not expecting it and it's a shock. It's not a shock. It's obvious, it's lazy, it's shitty. I hate it. Now with all that out of the way, let's talk about the positives of this Friday the 13th remake. First and foremost, 
is the cinematography by Daniel Pearl. This is the guy who did the cinematography for both the original and the remake of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and he does equally as great of a job in this movie. This movie has serious atmosphere just because of the cinematography alone. This dude knows how to light and shoot and frame a horror movie. There are so many awesome shots in this that totally just, they tell you everything about the scene without saying anything. It's just, it's like everything in this scene could be a still image on your wallpaper for your computer. There's so many awesome shots, like whenever Jason's going through the woods and the lighting's a certain way. It's a lot of the same tricks that he used in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is what made a lot of the cinematography in that movie so great. But it has its own kind of flavor with the Friday the 13th and the woods and the camp and everything like that. It's used equally well, so I love the cinematography for this. And going along with that cinematography, I think this movie has some of the best atmosphere of any of the Friday the 13th movies. There's definitely some movies in the early of the franchise that have great atmosphere, but this movie has awesome atmosphere. Like, it really has this gritty, dark, tense tone throughout it because every single place that you visit in this movie, from these rundown towns to Jason's little hideout underground, even to the little lake house in some aspects, it just feels dirty and grungy and dark. This is one of the darkest feeling Friday the 13th movies, and I love that. I love whenever you can have a dark, gritty tone that's brought out by the cinematography, brought out by the atmosphere, and Jason Voorhees has long missed a tone like that. Next thing that I really liked about this movie is often the thing that people harp on the most about this movie, and I don't get it at all, and that's the characters. Now, first of all, the main characters that you get into, namely Jared Padalecki, he is a really good character to follow. He's kind of like a play on the Hunter character from the fourth movie that's looking for a family member that was killed by Jason Voorhees. It's the same story. He's looking for his sister who has gone missing. She went missing in the opening sequence, and we'll get more into her character as well, but he's a great actor and he's a great character to follow for this because you have the sympathy towards him. You want him to achieve his goal of finding his sister. He's a character that you can get behind not only taking down Jason Voorhees, but surviving this little ordeal. He's not a character that you want to see get it at all. I just wanted to ask you, a fish. I wanted to ask you um, if maybe you've, you've seen somebody. My sister, she came camping up around here with some friends and she's gone missing. Jane missing. She's dead. Now his sister Whitney is not in the movie a lot, but I like the way that the movie utilizes her character because not only is she kind of the final girl for your intro to this movie, which you don't find out that she survives until later on, but I like the aspect of Jason kind of reminiscing about his mother, seeing a lot of likeness in Whitney and holding her hostage to hang on to that likeness. It plays a lot into the psychology that they put into Jason in Friday the 13th part two and it's just a very unique and fresh way to kind of have their own spin on that. Jason! It's okay. He can stop now. She looks like his mom. He misses his mom. His mom is the only thing in the world that ever mattered to him. So he keeps her. And that's another detail that people really harped on that they hated about this movie was that Jason took a hostage. If she looks like his mom, to me, it makes perfect fucking sense that he would take her hostage and keep her as like this little reminder or this little trophy to confuse himself into thinking that his mom is still around. I mean, he's mentally fucked up. You can see in the one scene whenever he sees the locket and he kind of remembers what happens to his mom, he starts throwing shit around and kicking it and she's fucking screaming and going nuts thinking he's about to come kill her. That right there tells you how mentally fucked up this dude still is about his mother all these years later. 
And all the other surrounding characters, I gotta be honest, they're entertaining. They're dumb. Some of them are stoners. Some of them is the token black guy. And you got the one dude who's like the biggest king douchebag of any slasher movie I've ever seen. But they're played up to an entertainment value that lands for me. None of the characters in this movie got to the point where they were annoying or they were hard to watch or I couldn't stand them to the point where I just want Jason to tear their fucking insides out. Even the douchebag character. You okay, bro? Is everything good? Yeah, everything's fine. Thanks. But I'm not your bro. So you don't want to be friends after this? You don't want to hang out? Let it go, Trent. That's usually the character that you cannot wait to get a machete shoved down his pee hole. But he's so fucking douchebag that he is entertaining as hell to watch and just keep going like, how far is this gonna go? How much more of an asshole are they gonna make this guy? And I have fun with it. I have fun watching Trent be the biggest piece of shit that I've ever seen. Your tits are stupid. And it helps when you have a character like that and they have a pretty fucking awesome and brutal death. When you have a character like that, you want to see them get the most painful way to exit the movie possible. And they do a pretty good job with Trent's characters. What they also do a good job with is most of the other kills. Now, speaking mostly on that opening sequence, we'll talk about that for a minute. The first 15 minutes or so of this movie, if that was just its own thing, is the greatest Friday the 13th anything that has ever been created. I mean, it's got everything you want in a Friday the 13th movie. It's got funny characters, it's got a lot of tits, it's got a lot of sex, it's got a lot of awesome kills, it's intense, it's brutal, Jason's badass, you got the kick-ass look of the sackhead Jason. It's so freaking intense that when you first see this movie, it's kind of a shock how intense it is. You're like, what the hell, dude? They're, they're killing like eight people already and we're here for 15 minutes. And then you see the title sequence and you're like Holy shit, that was just the opening? And even though I feel like the movie never quite gets back to that level of awesome it does still have some really good kills throughout it. You do have a very brutal Jason. You have a Jason that wants to cause a lot of pain in a lot of very different creative ways. And I like that. I like the more hunter Jason where he's like shooting arrows through people's heads and he's, you know, sticking a machete down onto somebody's skull when they're underneath him on a dock. And especially when you get to Trent's death when he's just fucking cutting a dude all the way up through his middle and then throws him onto some spikes. I mean, there is some awesome shit as far as the kills in this. And if you're gonna have a dark tone, if you're gonna have all the brutality and the atmosphere and the cinematography and the Jason that we're gonna talk a lot about, then you gotta have some awesome kills. And I feel like, for the most part, they really do good with delivering those awesome kills. Now, story-wise, I actually can talk positively about the story of a Friday the 13th movie. It's not an insult to say that the Friday the 13th movies previous to this were not concerned with story whatsoever. I think even the biggest Friday the 13th fanatic will admit that. You don't go to a Friday the 13th movie for an interesting story. But what I like what they do with this remake is that they pick little elements of the first four movies, which is kind of like the golden age of these Friday the 13th movies to most fans is the first four movies before A New Beginning came out and they went in a lot of different directions trying to keep steam in the franchise. It takes all these different story elements from the first four movies and it puts it together and it makes its own little spin on all of that for this new story. There's something in there. It looks like some kind of a doll. Are you crazy? Now, you can do that without feeling like you're overcrowding the movie because they never really had a whole lot of story in those movies. So it's easy to take a little bit from one, a little bit from two, a little bit from three, a little bit from four, and kind of scramble it all together and make this new story because it's enough to fill out motivations for Jason, some lore for Jason, some motivations for these characters. I mean, you get into like the first five minutes of this movie is like this black and white quick recap. Jason was my son. <laughs> you should have been watching him. Of the events of the first Friday the 13th, which is a genius idea because nobody 
wanted to see a gigantic section in this movie dedicated to Pamela Voorhees. You'll want to see Jason. As great as Pamela Voorhees is, you'll want to see Jason. So they get that out of the way, they establish the lore, you get the whole thing in two about, you know, trying to pretend to be Jason's mother. You have a very similar scene at the end of this movie, like when Ginny had in the end of Friday the 13th Part 2 and trying to get into the head of Jason Voorhees playing like he's the mother. Very cool stuff. And you have the whole aspect of him taking her hostage because she looks like his mother. Another cool little spin on it. You get some aspects of three in there with the hockey mask and finding all of that. And then in four, the biggest thing to take from it is honestly just the character of Jared Padalecki. But all of those elements are not only really cool nods to early beloved movies in this franchise, but they use them well to tell this new story and to kind of pad out this story to have something to tell aside from let's throw these people in front of Jason for 90 minutes. And the whole human motivation with Jared Padalecki's character about trying to find this sister and eventually finding her and trying to get out and save her, I mean, this gives you a good human avenue to stay with these characters aside from just the traditional who's gonna survive at the end. It gives you a motivation to get behind these characters, to get behind their survival, and even though we love Jason, to get behind them taking that motherfucker out. But the biggest positive for this movie to me, the thing that I love this movie for, the thing that breaks my heart if they're not gonna continue with this aspect of this movie whenever they do finally have another Friday the 13th movie, and the biggest reason why it baffles me why they haven't done another Friday the 13th movie yet, Derek Mears as Jason. Derek Mears, I will say now, is the most badass, scary, intense, brutal Jason in any of the Friday the 13th movies. I think that he is bar none the best, most badass portrayal of that character. Take that, motherfucker! I even have a little bit of horror memorabilia here. A little hatchet signed by Derek Mears. Very cool shit. Maybe I should have a hatchet signed by Kane Hodder. But what I love about Derek Mears and what he brings to this character is that you can just tell by the dude's performance that he just immerses himself completely into the character of Jason Voorhees. I mean, this dude is a fan of the franchise. He's a fan of the character. He's on record for saying he actually sympathizes with the character because of his own disabilities. He used to got you know, bullied in high school and in elementary school, and he kind of looked at Jason and was like, I could kind of get behind this dude. And he brings all of that to the role. Aside from that, he just has the most badass, the most intense, like, fucking animalistic take on this character that, of any of the portrayals, I would want him chasing me the least. I mean, he's fast, he's huge, he's strong, he's brutal. And everything that he brings to the scary aspect of Jason, the cool aspect of Jason, the psychological aspect of Jason to me is the most that any actor has put into this character since this franchise started. Please open up. I really cross my fingers that whenever they get another Friday the 13th movie, they go back to Derek Mears because as you can have your issues with this movie, but even those people who have a lot of issues with this movie will agree that Derek Mears was one badass fucking Jason Voorhees. So all in all, guys, I love the hell out of this movie. I feel like it's one of the definitive Friday the 13th movies in this franchise. It was an awesome kickoff point for a new franchise in a new era in this franchise, but for whatever reason, they just never really struck where the iron was hot. You got the most badass, awesome portrayal of Jason. You have really good kills. In my opinion, you have really good characters, especially Jared Padalecki and good acting. You have a good story that takes elements and pays nods and homages to the older movies while telling it in this new, fresh way. Great atmosphere, great cinematography, an awesome opening. All put that together, you just have one kick-ass Friday the 13th movie, despite a couple of small flaws. So if you loved the Friday the 13th franchise up to this point, maybe it was getting a little bit tired and of the schlocky Kane Hodder era, and you want to see Jason go back to his dark, bloody roots, by all means, go out now. Check out Friday the 13th. Add it to your collection immediately. Go out and buy it. So what do you guys think of Friday the 13th, the remake? Are you a fan of this movie? Do you hate it? 
Please explain to me if you hate it, why you hate this movie. Because like I said, I never understand why people harp on certain details of this movie so hard while defending the older movies. So please, argue down below all night long to try to get me to understand why you guys hate this movie. And if you love it, tell me down below as well because I want to see where my people are at. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. If you guys want to check out my social media links, check out Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Spreadshirt, and my Patreon page down in the video description below. And if you guys want to check out some more of my videos, including the rest of this Friday the 13th review series before we wrap it up with Never Hike Alone, you can check that out by clicking right over here.